Hello guys, what is up? This is Galactic Elliot, coach of the Chicago Cup Shoes, bringing you guys the WBE Season 2 Draft Breakdown for the Chicago Cup Shoes team. So, this is the World Battle Entertainment League brought to you by Adrian, the person that created it. This is the second time the Chicago Cup Shoes are in this league, and this season was actually kind of different from the last season, because last season only had 12 people, this time we have 16. We have a ton of new coaches that are brought to you guys for this league, and I am happy to be a part of Season 2, actually. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, you guys can have a good time with it. This is the type of league that I like to, you know, kind of just relax with, bring out some cool sets for, and uh, I'm not here to exactly win every single game and go try hard. I'm more so here to just enjoy the new Pokemon, enjoy different types of styles of battling, and... Just have a good time overall, and hopefully everybody that watches this league has that same mindset because I think this is something special. It's for entertainment like Vitas, Jess, and you know, why not bring in some new types of Pokemon to use? That's my goal for this whole entire season, to draft some new things. So today, we just did the draft uh, for this league. So if you guys did not check that out, make sure you uh, check it out. It will probably be on Adrab's channel more than likely in the next few days. But um, if you guys just want to see what we drafted, the Chicago Cup Shoes, then you're uh, out there in the right video. So uh, I believe we have a ninth pick. And with a ninth pick, you're kind of right in the middle, like monkey in the middle, if you will. And it's not really the best pick ever. Uh, a lot of the Pokemon that I want to kind of just went right away. As you could probably imagine, we were actually looking to take... Zygarde 50% with the first pick, and unfortunately, that was taken uh, by Game Boy Luke in the fifth overall pick. Uh, kind of surprised that it was taken top five. Uh, something like Zygarde has never taken top five, but uh, Game Boy Luke wanted to take here in black. It was taken, I believe, by Chase, aka Kirsten Seabad, and he ended up wanting to take Zygarde 50, and that was a huge snipe and completely changed any sort of plans that we had in the first place, which kind of sucked, but at the same exact time, hey man, what's the fun in just, you know, having everything kind of laid out there for you? So, I wouldn't really call it a snipe, even though it was a snipe, because, you know, there's so many other good Pokemon that we could have picked. So, with the first pick of the draft, we ended up taking Mega Lopany. So, Mega Lopany is a Pokemon that I've wanted to use for a very long time, and I've never been able to use it. I've used Pokemon similar to it, like Mega Metacham, and Mega Metacham is nice, but uh, isn't as fast, and doesn't have uh, Scrappy, so it, it can't really hit Ghost as well, uh, you know, Mega Metacham can hit Ghost with Zen Hepa, and that's really it. With Mega Lopini, you can still hit your return, still hit your high jump kick strain punches, and, uh, it, you know, just like Mega Metacham, this thing does get the elemental punches, and, uh, honestly, man, Mega Lopini is such a fun Pokemon, back then it was considered one of the most busted Megas in the format in terms of what they typically would allow, and uh, honestly, man, I'm just happy to be able to use it. It gets nice priority, it gets lots of just quick moves to use, it hits like a truck, and I I don't know, it's just one of those fun mods that uh, really can shape out your team just in the first pick, and I usually struggle with speed whenever it comes to my teams. If you guys have seen my teams with an MPA, the P4G, and last season for the WBE in specific, my teams have been insanely slow. And I wanted to really fix it up this season and have one really fast Pokemon. Because last season, our fastest Pokemon was our base 100 Mega Metacham, and later on we picked up Volcarona, which is also base 100 speed. And you cannot have your fastest Pokemon be base 100 speed. So we wanted to pick up Mega Lopunny, see where we'd go with it, and honestly, this is going to be such a fun Pokemon. Let me know in the comment section below which one of these Pokemon we end up drafting, uh, you know, ends up being your favorite one. Because, honestly, man, I don't know if it is Mega Lopunny that's my favorite, but just keep on watching. You'll figure out which Pokemon probably is my favorite pick. Uh, more than likely because of where we got it versus, uh, you know, what Pokemon it exactly is. But yeah, that was our first pick, and without further ado, our second round pick wended, uh, wended, ended up being Blacephalon. So, you can already tell I'm going for the new Pokemon. You can kind of already tell that I'm going for Pokemon I've never used before, with going for the Megalopony and then not Blacephalon. Blacephalon is an insanely, insanely offensive Pokemon, also really fast. So, two fast offensive Pokemon right off the, uh, right off the deck, and um, one very good physically offensive Pokemon. One very good special offensive Pokemon. That's how we're pretty much going to roll and go with that. It's going to be a lot of fun using this thing. Uh, obviously, the mind bloat is insane. Uh, we got 
just crazy fire stab and crazy ghost stab enti entirely. We have flame charge, which is absolutely insane if we can pull that off and get some beast boosts with special attack and just sweep some opponents. A very nice late game uh, sweeper, especially for weakened minds. It's just so good. Uh, you can run this thing life orb, scarf, uh, possibly even Z move if I end up getting uh, you know the Z crystal for mind blown. That'd be insane, but. Uh, you know, man, I I just I want to use something new, and Blacephalon just seems like a fun toy. A very scary uh, duo over here with Megalopony and Blacephalon, and um, that's the first two rounds for us that I really do like. But uh, now I'm starting to realize we need to start getting our core started up a little bit. And well, at this point, a lot of dragons were taken, a lot of fairies were taken, a lot of stupid Pokemon were taken, and um, I wanted to make sure that we got our pieces settled. I wanted to make sure we got something bulky, something that could set up a little bit, maybe even get some T-Waves off, and an annoying Pokemon in general, a Pokemon that now gets Defog, Klefki. Klefki was our third round pick. You could say this is a bit of an early pick, but not really. Um, I think that it probably would have gone. I saw a lot of people, you know, in the chat go like, oh my god, Snipe, so I figured that this is a good time to take it, and uh, I'm really happy that we ended up getting ourselves Klefki because it's a mod that I wanted to use a little bit, and it's just better than ever in Sun and Moon now that, um, you know, it gets Defog. And you can say that Prankster kind of made it crappy, but no uh, Dark-type Pokemon wants to come in on a Fairy anyways, so you could argue that, but really the only thing I can't do is Thunder Wave a uh, Dark-type Pokemon, and at that point, it's not really a big deal, man. I feel like Klefki still puts in the work, uh, you know, obviously the Spikes, Obviously, the T waves. Uh, you can even run a calm mind, special variant, Dreading Kiss. Uh, it's just a really cool Pokemon. It's not meant to be offensive. It can also put up the screens, which is super nice. It's just, it's gonna be really nice for us, I feel. And um, I really look forward to using it, man. I really do look forward to using it. Sorry if the music's a little bit blasting in your guys' ears. Oh boy. But yeah, that was our third round pick. And without further ado, let's get on to round number four. So for round number four, um, sorry about the music, guys. Uh, we ended up actually going with a nice little different round of going Galvantula. So, speed control is our next uh, thing, and you're probably wondering, why do you need speed control? Your Pokemon are already so fast, what are you doing? And, I mean, honestly, man, you can never go too fast. Galvantula is way really nice. Um, it obviously is there for the Sticky Wes, but you don't even need Sticky Wes with this thing. It's just fast on its own. It's offensive on its own. It has compound eyes for the beautiful thunders that you can actually use. 30% paralysis chance with that beautiful, uh, you know, just powerful stand in itself, man. Thunder is so powerful. And to be able to use it and um, hopefully not miss it. Uh, it. It's really nice. You can use Voltage for the pivot. So, getting some pivot for this uh, team that kind of does need that pivot. Uh, you know, have, with having so many offensive threats, what's really going to want to take a hit from one of these monsters? And, um, you know, Bug Buzz obviously goes through the sub, and having that be stab is super nice. Uh, this thing can get Sucker Punch, not really the best move for it ever, but it can catch some people off guard if I ever decide to run it. A nice Scarf option in case I just want something to nuke some things. Which, again, this thing is powerful on its own. You do not need to run it as Sticky Web. It can do uh, things outside the Sticky Web. It's not a one-trick pony. Um... And yeah, honestly, I just I look forward to using this thing a lot. I've never gotten to use the Galvantula. I've always wanted to use it. It's probably my favorite sticky ever. Other people may say Rackman is better. Other people may say Slurpuff is better. Other people may say that uh, I don't even know what else would be better. Honestly, Galvantula is so good. Um, I really look forward to using it, man. And without further ado, let's get on to the next Pokemon. Also, wait a before I go on, uh, this thing also does get Unnerve. And in uh, Gen 7, you guys know, berries are OP. So I can run Unnerve. And if I go against something like a Snorlax, uh, hey, you can't really use your berries. Sorry, buddy. But uh, I, it's not really the best matchup for Snorlax anyways. Either way, round five coming up. And for round five, we went off to go with Silvalli. Or if you want to call it Silvalli, you can go for Silvalli. I call it Silvalli because of the anime, but it, I used to call it Silvalli. Either way, Silvalli is really nice. Uh, it's a very, very uh, cool Pokemon to have on your team. And I must specify this is all-time Silvalli. So... You can run this thing as any type you want, normal included, and, you know, obviously you can also run the Z Crystal uh, to make it like its type or whatever. Uh, I just want to specify one thing, though, for those that are curious why uh, Z Crystal is on the uh, draft list. Basically, we have to draft the Z Crystal during the draft. It does count as a pick. So if we end up picking a draft, uh, let's, say, let's say I pick a Z Crystal round six, that is going to be my pick for round six. It's not an extra pick. It's actually a base pick. And... 
Uh, basically, you are able to use the Z Crystal um, for any Pokemon that you want, but you cannot use any other Z Crystal. So let's say I get Watcherium Z. I'm not able to run Fire Z any other week. I can draw for another Z Crystal, but I can only use that one Z Crystal, and I can use that any of my Pokemon, including the Mega. So for whatever reason, if I wanted to run, you know, if I wanted to get Phytinium Z, and I wanted to run regular Lopunny with like Z High Jump Kick, I could, but. It's mostly good for things like Mega Latios and Latias, because you could run Mega Latios or Latias, or you can run regular Latios or Latias with the Z Crystal. Or if you want to get Garchomp, like Mega Garchomp, you can run Mega Garchomp, get free points, and then also are able to run things like Z Earthquake if you get Grandium Z, or Z uh, Outrage if you get Dragonium Z. So it's cool with the Mega for the most part. Otherwise, uh, the Z Crystal whole entire thing is not really the best. Um, at the very least, you're, you are able to prep for the opponent with it. I just want to make sure I mention this because um, some people may be curious about it. I don't really want to get too much into it. But yeah, Silvalli is really nice with that. Um, I am looking to get a Z Crystal that will fit Silvalli very, very well. Uh, this thing also does get Parting Shout, which is a very nice pivot move. It gets tons of coverage moves. It's base 95 all around, which is really nice. And um, I don't know, man. I've never gotten to use it. And we have like... We have like two Pokemon that are basically Gen 7 so far, so lots of new Pokemon. Um, no Pokemon under Generation 5 right now, unless you count Megalopony as Gen 3, even though Mega, I would say, is Gen 6. But yeah, our, our Pokemon have been fairly new so far, so let's go ahead and change it up a little bit with Round 6. And for Round 6, we go ahead and take Uxie, which is Generation 4, and Uxie is such a beast. Uh, Uxie. I'm going to call it Uxie, because some people may be like, Uxie's wrong, but... Uh, Uxie, Uxie, it's such a good Pokemon. It has U-Turn for the pivot. It has knockoff if you want to get a nice little defensive knockoff off. It has Memento, has Healing Wish. It has uh, T-Wave, Stealth Rock. It's just such a nice bulky sponge you can bring in at any given point. And uh, you can give it Color Berry to take on the Dark Moves. You can give it Leftovers to get that steady recovery back. It's just able to just do so much. And I've never gotten to use it yet. And in my opinion, I really like it out of the Light Trio's... Uh, Azelf and Uxie are just so nice. Mesprit's also really nice. I feel like all three of them are really good for what they're capable of. Uh, Uxie is just the defensive one, and we really needed a defensive Pokemon, especially a nice little uh, psychic Pokemon to bring in on this team that, uh, you know, aside from Blacephalon, could take on Gra uh, not Grass Moves, uh, Dark Moves very well. Uh, Uxie is just that defensive Pokemon that we wanted to get. Um, it also gets Levitate, so hello, uh, Earthquakers. Uh, you cannot use Earthquake on this Pokemon, so there you go. Because our team is not really taking Earthquakes too well um, whenever it comes to Blacephalon and Clefki, but, you know, Magnarize is always a thing as well. But either way, Uxie is amazing, and I cannot wait to use this thing. This thing looks so cute. Like, just look at it. It's adorable. It also looks kind of scary. It, it kind of looks scary in this picture. I'm not even going to lie. But either way, with round 7 coming up, we decided to take a low and purge, and you guys can kind of tell what our theme is at this point. Two parting shot Pokemon and one Memento Pokemon. We're out here with Pivots on pivots and this thing also does get u-turn i do believe as well so don't want to use parting shot we also got u-turn which is super nice also a very nice taunt user um a very bulky pokemon a very bulky dark pokemon at that um can pretty good on pranks if we wanted to this way they can't just come in on a clef key even though clef key could just kind of use play rough slash draining kiss on it but uh Alolan and Persian is such a cool Pokemon. Uh, I've, I've really wanted to use it for a while now, and it's great to finally be able to draft it, especially in a nice little fun league. Uh, it's just super fast, super bulky, uh, with fur coat especially making it more bulky than it's, than it's supposed to be. And uh, it doesn't hit that hard, but it hits hard enough. And you can also run Technician, I believe, with this as well. So it's, uh, it's a nice Pokemon to have. Uh, we can use different moves with it. And, hey, I mean, if we want to run Technician, we can run that nice little hidden power and make it a 90% uh, percent powerful move. So, it's a very interesting mod. You can run it both physically and specially, which is nice, too. And, uh, yeah. Without further ado, let's get on to round 8. And round 8, we actually end up taking a Z Crystal. So, Z Crystals. Like I said before, uh, we can only use this certain Z Crystal on our team unless we drop it for another one. Darkinium Z is perfect for our team because we have two Parting Shot users and one Memento user, all Dark type moves. And if we want to go for Dark Pulse, Z Dark Pulse works out quite fine. And um, if we want to use just, you know, Z Multi Attack, I, I don't know if Multi Attack actually turns into the uh, type move, actually. I think it's kind of like Empower, but uh, 
you know, I could give this to Silvalli and give it the dark type uh, if I wanted to. Uh, the only, that's the biggest issue with uh, this league is the fact that uh, you are limited to one Z crystal. But at the same time, it's interesting and it's very uh, niche and unique to this league. So I figured this would probably be the best Z crystal. Uh, other people may say, oh, like you could have gotten like, you know, a Z crystal for plus Ephalon to use Mind Blown, which would have been cool, but I wanted to use Dark Z. I, w I wanted those strong pivots and be able being able to restore the Pokemon. So basically, Z Memento uh, is kind of like Healing Wish. So the Pokemon dies, the opponent's attack and special attack drop by two, and whatever Pokemon you end up bringing again get fully restored. So health is restored, sass is, uh, you know, all, all that is pretty much just healed up. It's, it's, it's quite nice, it's kind of like Healing Wish. Pokemon still dies, but it's Healing Wish with the opponent losing uh, attack and social attack by two stages. Parting Shot is the same exact thing. It's, it's Pivot, your Pokemon does not die, the opponent loses attack and social attack just by one stage, but whatever Pokemon you end up bringing again can get to full health. So let's say I use the Parting Shot or Z Memento and bring in Blacephalon that was injured earlier. Well, here comes this thing in on a Pokemon that's minus two in both of its attacks. And this thing can pretty much just start destroying whatever comes in its way. I could set up, I could just kill Pokemon and get Beast Boost up. Uh, like I said, Flame Charge is a very nice uh, tactic with it to bring up my speed. And after one Flame Charge, I pretty much outspeed everything with just how just naturally speedy this thing is and just those that pivot plus bringing it in on Pokemon to heal them up entirely with the Z crystal is going to be super nice for the team so that's why we took that in my opinion a very valuable pick let me know what you guys think of Darkinium Z on this team in the comment section below but I think it's a very very fitting and nice pick for us very excited to be able to use it as last season we uh, took the Rockium Z and we tried the whole entire Sandstorm shenanigans, did not really work out. So I feel like this season we drafted uh, a lot better and a lot more accordingly to synergize with our team a lot better. Without further ado, let's go on to round nine. In round nine, we ended up actually taking Claydol. So another Levitator on the team. Uh, the reason why I took Claydol actually is because we take an Ice Moves so well. Blacephalon could take Ice Moves, Clef could take Ice Moves, Savali, depending on what kind of type we give it, could take on Ice Moves, and I think also is really too weak to Ice at all, so we could take Ice Moves quite well, uh, we could take Water Moves decently with some of our mods too, not really the best, but decently, and um, you know, what's what's a, what's a ground what, what's a ground move to our team? With two Levitators, it's going to be super nice, sure we're doubling up on Psychic, sure we have another Dark weakness, but then we also have Mega Lobby could take on Dark, Lola and Persia could take on Dark, and Clef could take on Dark, so... You know, some dark weaknesses, some not so dark weaknesses. We can cover it up a little bit. And this thing's mostly here because it can do so much. It could be a great, uh, I believe, rock sitter. It can uh, rapid spin, which is super nice. And uh, it's pretty bulky naturally. We can make it even more bulky. Um, it's not really the most offensive Pokemon ever. But we can also uh, give it some shenanigans with some moves. It has decent uh, coverage, surprisingly enough. And it's just a very unique Pokemon. I feel like it just kind of fit our team decently. Uh, I'm not very excited about it, but hey, it's decent. It's a tier 5 Pokemon that uh, does what we needed to do. I actually was thinking about taking Sand Slash, but uh, unfortunately we just ended up taking Claydol. And um, hey, maybe, maybe just maybe you can put in the work. Maybe just maybe we may drop it. Who knows? But uh, it could surprise some people. And its speed isn't that bad. So you never know. We can maybe scarf from one week and surprise people. And uh, it could set up some uh, cool defensive stuff. So I like it, and we'll see what we can do with it. Either way, for round 10, we are going to go ahead and take up Lapras. So I just want to let you guys know that the next two picks are probably my least favorite picks. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just going to straight up say that right now. We, at this point in the draft, obviously didn't have a lot going for us. And our last pick is going to be the craziest pick of them all, so stay tuned for round 12. But round 10, we took Lapras, one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. It's so such a beautiful Pokemon. Water Absorb is super nice. We can run D-Dance with this thing with Ice Shard as the uh, priority. And, um, it, you know, obviously it's super defensive, and unfortunately it doesn't get Skull, but it does get Surf, so Surf, you know, the more offensive uh, part of the Water-type uh, spectrum, it could work out for us. Ice Beam, Stab, uh, you know, obviously we can get the Freeze Dry, Freeze Dry is super underrated, man. I used Articuno in the P4G, and it just put in such work with Freeze Dry, so our uh, Lapras getting uh, Freeze Dry is super duper nice, it also gets Heal, I believe, so it uh, can take out some pressure in case of any Skull Burns happening, and also this thing can 
switching a Scald so nicely. So, uh, Labrys synergizes with the team very well. Overall, it's not really the best Pokemon to have in this in any league for that matter, but for this team, I feel like it fits very, very well as a nice little bulky water type Pokemon. And, uh, like I said, man, D Dance, I may bring it one week. You never know. <laughs> I'm just saying. But, um, overall, it could hit on both sides. It could be defensive on both sides. Speed isn't the greatest, but it does get priority. Heal Bell. And, uh, it just soaks up hits, literally. After that, we go ahead on to round 11, and we're gonna actually go ahead and take. Leafeon. So Leafeon is actually, um, so the front office is fair Pokemon. It's a very cool Pokemon. Uh, it's very, very bulky. And also it can hit pretty hard on the offensive end. It has a good attack, a good speed, and a good swords dance. So this thing, you know, it can be quite deceptive with how bulky and how offensive it can be. Um, how speedy it can be as well. Underrated speed. And it does get obviously the wish and the, uh, I believe heal bell. So it's a decent cleric. Not really the top cleric on our team or the top player that can be on our team, but it can put in the work on that end, and, uh, you know, it is our grass type, so that's what we're going to end up having. Uh, we can end up dropping it for something else. I'm not going to say what Pokemon, obviously, in case anybody, any other coach is looking, but um, you never know. I, I may I may end up slapping this thing in the future, but if it puts in the work, honestly, Leafeon, it could, it could surprise some people. And like I said before, like, Lampers, it just fits the team pretty well. I'm kind of iffy on Lampers and Leafeon, but at the same time, they can be deceptive they can be a uh, bulky yet offensive pokemon and they are nice support pokemon for the rest of the team with having heal bell and uh with leafeon and specifically having wish so we'll see what happens it'll see that swing attack but you know not the best priority ever last but not least guys this in my opinion is my favorite pick of the draft because this certain pokemon i was actually looking to take round two and then we decided to wait on it and we we're like okay let's take this pokemon round four Let's take this Pokemon round six. Let's take this Pokemon around round. Elite. No, you know, screw it. Let's just let's just take it. The last pick. So, drum roll, please. Last Pokemon that we ended up taking ends it up being Dragonite. Yes, guys, we ended up taking Dragonite with our last pick, and this thing is so freaking cool, man. Dragonite is a Pokemon that I've wanted to use competitively for such a long time. Multi-scale. Beast. It could take on any moves. It could take on super effective moves. It could take ice moves whenever it's at multi-scale range. This thing is bulky for what it's worth. And I can run weakness policy deviance. Unfortunately, I can't run Z-Fly with it. But I can run some other types of moves with it, man. I don't need it. Plus, having the E-Speed, I can run it Bandit. I can run Bandit E-Speed. I can run Bandit Dragon Claw. I can run... Banded, uh, whatever the case is, man. This thing's offensive. This thing is not the slowest Pokemon ever. After one D dance or two D dances, I can pretty much put in the work. I can use double dance if I felt like it, I, I believe, as well. And, man, this thing is such a monster. It can also, uh, you know, I, I believe it does get Roost as well, so I can restore its HP. And I don't know, it's just a cool Pokemon. It's put in so much work. I've seen it just, it's so underrated. I, I feel like it's just... <laughs> It's just always hanging around, and people don't give it the love and respect that it deserves. So, I really want to put in the work with Dragonite this season. One of the more underrated Tier 1 Pokemon. We ended up saving lots of points for this thing, and somehow ended up getting Megalopony, Bocephalon, and Dragonite. So, <laughs> this thing is going to be so beautiful, so nice. I can't wait to use it. And, um, so many offensive threats, man. This team is super fast, and uh, also has some slow parts to it. But... For the slow parts, we do have Sticky Web and some speed support. Um, it's quite nice, man. I, I really like this team. I think it's very unique. All these Pokemon I've never used before in League format. I do believe I haven't. Uh, I've used some of them in casual battles, but never in League. So I really can't wait, man. It's going to be so much fun. Let me know again what you guys think is your uh, favorite pick of mine in the comment section below. I really think that Dragonite's my favorite just because of the fact that I got it in the last pick in itself. I think that's just the most redeeming factor the most redeeming part about it the most redeeming factor about it and um i can't wait for the uh i, can, I cannot wait for the wb guys and hopefully you guys are hyped for this season if you guys are hyped let me know down below drop a like let me know who you who are you rooting for this season are you guys rooting for the chicago cup cheese are you guys rooting for the minnesota vikings are you guys rooting for the new york mankeys who else are you rooting for let me know let me know who, maybe you're rooting for more than one coach i have no idea I, for one, am super psyched for all the coaches, man. I, I really can't wait. And, um, you know, I got to say this, man. 
I uh, actually look I look up the Shady Penguin, man. I look up the Shady Penguin and the New York Yankees. Uh, he's the reason why I even found interest in league format, and it's really cool to be in the league with him. So <laughs> that's who I'm personally very pumped for. And uh, I don't want to leak anything, but I do battle against Shady this season. So, Shady, um, all I'm going to say is, is that I'm going to be going try hard against the man. I'm not going to be throwing toxic sets out there, but I'm going to be trying my very best against you, my man. I I'm not really looking to win throughout this whole entire season. I'm not really, that's like, that's not my focus. My focus is to, you know, have fun. But, Shady, I I'm looking forward to battling you, man. Either way, without further ado, my name is Glad to go, and you guys can just call me Elliot, though. Coach of the Chicago Cup Chiefs, and uh, we'll be bringing you guys week one of the WBE very soon. Very pumped. I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah, make sure you guys watch the other coaches of the WBE, their draft breakdowns, and everything like that. I'll catch you guys later on, though. Peace out.